Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hello, I'm Larry. Hi, I'm Brianna. How are we today? Good? Oh, I can't hear you. How are we doing today? Oh, I'm, I'm Charlie. And I'm Josh. I work with kids. I have to do that. <laughs> Already. How's everybody doing today? Hungry. Pretty good. Hungry. Yeah, Great. hungry. How's it going? Good. How are you, Lainey, the moderator? Hungry. Hungry as well. <laughs> Already, I'll see if I can uh, hook you guys up uh, with something to eat. But I have something to eat. Let's talk about something mm -hmm. to drink. Uh -huh. uh, Put it away. What are we going over today? We are going over before the cask of wine by Lee Puff. I love oh, wine. Okay. On, on the ground. And it's quite something that we think a lot about uh, Italian culture when we think about wine, but just about everything uh, Lee Puff wrote about, uh, he, he wrote a lot about wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rice wine's also a, a mm -hmm. thing. So. I like a nice yeah. sweet, wine, sweet wine. But then next thing I know, I'm on the. I, I'm, that's all I need, and then I'm done. I'm trashed. Mm. What's our discussion going to be for today? Do you feel that this poem has an ecstatic moment? Being drunk. Do you. Um, yes. Because yes. <laughs> I, I only got drunk. Where, where once do you, where do you see it? I see the fact that I think the way that the poem is structured is life in a day. The fact that. Uh, the, the rising of the sun, and it starts with uh, a description of spring. Oh, of course. Is supposed to be uh, the idea of being young. And the way that it ends, sun going down and more autumn and winter kind of yeah. feeling. Winter is usually seen as a dark, desolate. Um, Fall is age and winter is death. Yeah, well, yeah. But. And springtime is being born, summer is. Party! Just the ecstatic moment can be uh, seen clearest in the second stanza, which reads, You pretty girl, wine flushed, your rosy face is rosier still. How long may the peach and plum trees flower by the green painted house? The fleeting light deceives man, brings soon the stumbling age, which the ecstatic moment in this poem has to do with the idea that this woman that the speaker is uh, talking about uh, is so beautiful and so pure that age does not affect her, and that uh, age is not a. Uh, the, it's uh, the fact that uh, the wine provides the uh, endless purity. Yes, and wine. It's when it's aged, a nice, a, a nice aged wine. Yeah. I think like maybe ten years, twelve years usually. Um, it's really good. Wine is good with or without age, and of course, the yeah. same can be said about a uh, beautiful woman. Well, mm -hmm. this is strange because I, I don't necessarily think that there is a, uh, uh, an ecstatic moment there. And uh, the reason I say that is because in that same stanza, you, you have uh, the, the second two lines, mm -hmm. which are you know, more about the fleeting nature of life. It's like this... It's here, but it's not going to last. So maybe, maybe it is. But I mean, just the fact that, like, when you're in an ecstatic moment, you're not thinking about it not lasting. You're thinking about I'm in this moment and it is great and wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I don't really. I think that the poem is more about that uh, the the um, progression of life from from those young to the old and how that's uh, something to consider. Uh, you know. Like, when you're young, you should be making the most of your youth because when you're old, you don't want to regret not doing that. Yeah. Go out. Have that glass of wine. Have that, have that um, I think you know. most of the poem has to do with age, but I think that the, uh, the moment uh, referring to the uh, woman is that moment of ecstasy, which that's just stepping away for... You seconds at that, and it's just this idea of uh, a different kind of positive feeling before coming back to what really is. Yeah, but it's like, it, in a way, it makes it uh, less meaningful or less uh, less um, impactful to kind of just give it this context of when you're old. You know, this is what you're going to look back on as, uh, this, as is what, this is what I've done in my life. life. Yeah. You can either say, I had a great life, you know, 
I, I did everything I wanted. I am I'm rich, or uh, I don't. I, I gave my money to this charity. I did this. Or you can look back and say, there's just a detachment in it. I have a lot of cats. No, no offense <laughs> to people that like cats, but you know. Cats are the best. I would say that there is detachment. I, oh yeah, I would agree with that much. For me, it'd be like, I have a lot of drums. I mean, that's like, you know, ecstasy. It's not supposed to last, you know? It's no, supposed it to be moments. So, like, it's just mm. a moment, and that's, that's yeah, what I, makes that's exactly, the moment so mm -hmm. meaningful. That's exactly how I had thought. I yeah. tend yeah. to agree with you with that regard. Yeah. I've actually had moments of ecstasy, and no, it wasn't with a cookie. It was just, mm -hmm. I would, I'd be driving, and I would get it out and, you know, get to my destination, and I'd, and I'd be doing a performance with a band I play in, a Scottish band, um, and I would get to where I'm going, and, um, you know, I played Times Square in New York one night, um, actually twice, and that moment of ecstasy was like, wow, I'm really here. This is where the ball drops every year. Yeah, no. I would say that we all have those kind of moments where yeah. it, it's just this idea of, uh, I hate, I hate it, uh, yeah, it, mine is extra short because everyone's like, hey, what's under that, what's under that kilt? And then, you know, I get in trouble for what I say. Mm. There goes running. <laughs> anyway. Anybody have any final thoughts? <coughs> well, I mean, the, the first line, too, is kind of, you know, the spring <coughs> comes from the east and quickly passes, just like moments mm -hmm. of happiness. It's yeah. pretty much, the, the spring wind, it's the beginning of life. Uh, spring usually represents the beginning of life. Or the day begins with the sun rising in the east. Mm -hmm. yes. And then... The, uh, I think we discussed this in another. We begin uh, to age uh, during the fall, yeah. according to the uh, life of the year, and the sun sets in the west. Mm -hmm. Which is why usually uh, watching a sunset on the west coast is much more... Uh, uh, visually pleasing? Yeah, visually pleasing. Uh, watching a sunrise is more visually pleasing on the east coast. Right. Mm -hmm. In I would love America. To I would say. I've actually, you know, I've seen the sunrise before, and uh, mm. of course, you don't look directly at the sun. Mm. Mm -hmm. Don't ask why. Duh. It took me a while to realize that, mm. but I was up real early, and I have a nice picture window, and I looked out, and I'm like, that's so beautiful. Oh my god! And then after that happened, uh, <laughs> so you gotta pace yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, but um, sunglasses, perhaps. <clears throat> no, that no, mm. don't even with sunglasses. Um, mm. Yeah. So after you know, a little pain. You, I watched the rest of it and from, you know, a, an angle. I think you look at it at an angle somehow, you know, like, I don't know. Not going into logistics, but it's beautiful. It's really, really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I was like, the sun is coming up, today's a new day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out and buy some whatever. Swiss rolls. I love those. Spring mm -hmm. rolls? Yeah. Uh, Swiss, Swiss rolls. Little Debbie oh, Swiss, Swiss rolls. I had a whole thing of... Yeah, yeah. I, I had some yesterday. <laughs> I had some this morning to warm up, and I am ready to eat this cookie. And <laughs> after the end of this take, well, guys. Then. If you're interested <laughs> in reading it. this poem and some <laughs> other aesthetic poems, and uh, some research about uh, uh, the uh, aesthetic feeling through reading. You uh, have a wonderful author. Check out uh, Wild Poets of Ecstasy by a professor who resides in a van down by the river. He's also a great drummer, like me. DJ Moore. Shout out! Also known as Don Moore's. Uh, he has this uh, interesting collection uh, from the works uh, from the Hebrew Bible. And he also has some more uh, current uh, writer, uh, current poets. Uh, Susanna Rich, Alex Gray, Daniel Weeks, Greg Brown... My neck is killing me. Jack uh, Heitner. Is that Will Cather? Willa Cather? Yeah, Will Cather Very submitted nice. something. Very nice. Which has some uh, interesting uh, selections in here. Uh, he, you could see his uh, in, interest for Bhakti poetry in here as well. Uh, St. Francis of Assisti. Uh, oh, yeah. Canticle of the Sun. Oh, Canticle of the Sun. I like that. Mm -hmm. Wait, there, now St. Francis? What was that? Yeah, St. Francis of Assisi. Right here. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, right. Sophocles is, uh, uh, Sappho has something in here. Mm -hmm. Sappho's amazing. Alrighty. Alrighty. Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading.